kids, this is Ms. Kulkani. In this video, we are going to talk about Bohr's atomic model and how it helps us finding valence electron and also it gives us some easy information about formation of an ion. So let's begin. This is our aluminum and it says 27 is the aluminum given. Whenever there is a number given that indicates it's an isotope of aluminum with the atomic mass as 27. When we look carefully it says no charge. If it's no charge that means it is not an ion but it is an atom. So we got that part done. Then it's asking you for nuclear symbol. Al is the symbol for aluminum and we need to write down two things with the atom the atomic number and atomic mass number. The atomic mass number is given as 27 and if you look on the periodic table you will find the atomic number as 13. So that's what we have as a nuclear symbol for aluminum and there's no charge so remember we don't write usually zero if there is no charge. Number of protons. The atomic number corresponds to number of protons so they will be 13. There is no charge on aluminum atom, so electrons, protons must be equal. So you can tell me electrons must be 13. Then how do you get neutrons? Neutrons are always atomic mass number minus the atomic number, 13. And that gives you 14 as neutrons. So we got all the atomic particles for aluminum. And now we have to write down the electron configuration and also orbital diagram for aluminum. So how does it work? We have 13 electrons and we have to make sure they are arranged properly. Now Bohr did not actually go into sublevel. Bohr was only explaining the energy level. So we have energy level 1, okay, then we have energy level 2, energy level 3 and energy level 4. And remember the formula. The formula we had is 2n square. 2n square gives us number of electrons. So if n is equal to 1, we get electrons as 2 times 1 square, which will be 2. If n is equal to 2, we get 2 times 2 square, which will be 8. And then 8 plus 2 is 10. Think about how many electrons we have. We have three electrons. So in the third energy level, we are going to only have three electrons left over. So if I really want to show the electrons in this particular model, I can show two electrons in level one. Then I can have all those eight electrons in the second level okay and then we have three in the third level so we end up having only three so in a way we can write the simplified configuration as two eight and three and then if you want to write exactly with s and p subshells which you know then we know this is level one in level 1, we only have S, so it's 1S2. This 8 comes from level 2. Level 2 has S and P, so it's 2S completely filled in and 2P completely filled in, so it's 2S2, 2P6. And of course, the 3 electrons go into the third level, which only will have 3S will be 2, and then directly it will go to 3P, and there's one electron remaining in the orbital. So if you want to draw the orbital diagram for this molecule, this atom, how can you do that? You can have one S as one line, then we have two S as single line, and then we have two P as three lines. So we have S electron completely filled in, we have two S completely filled in, 2p completely filled in and then we are not yet done so we have 3s which is completely filled in and then we have 3p out of which only one electron 
is in p orbital so what we ended up getting is the orbital diagram for aluminum atom and how many valence electron we got those are the electrons which are in the outermost energy level which are 3 so we got 3 as the valence electron okay so what is the most likely an ion which is formed for aluminum let me show here this is the aluminum which we have and then the last ending configuration comes from the row number 3 and that's why we end up getting that as 3s2 and then we have 4p1 now if you look carefully the noble gas which comes before that is right here and that is neon and what do we have for neon for neon it ends up with 2s2 look at that and then we have 2p6 and of course everything else is filled in before that the only thing which is missing here is these three electrons so if aluminum ends up losing this and these two three electrons it's going to be isoelectronic with neon and that's what it likes to do so it actually loses three electrons and turns into an ion so how will aluminum ion look like now aluminum ion will not have exactly same number of electrons the atom had 13 electrons right so we ended up getting that as 1s2 2s2 2p6 3s2 and 3p1 and when it turns into an ion is going to lose these 2 and 1 electron 3 electrons so aluminum ion will be positive because it's going to be losing electrons it loses 3 electrons so it's positive 3 and now the electrons will not be 13 but they will be 10 and now what is remaining is the electron configuration which is 1s2 2s2 and 2p6 that's it and what does it look like again that looks like the noble gas which comes before that which has the atomic number 10 which is neon so this question is asking you which noble gas aluminum looks like isoelectronic that's going to be the one which we have above here and that is going to be neon because neon has 10 electrons and aluminum ion also has 10 electrons this question is asking us is the resulting ion larger or smaller than the original atom let's look at the aluminum atom and the ion and find out what is the difference between both of those protons for both of those will be 13 electrons for an atom are 13 but electrons for an ion are going to be 3 less so it will be 10 now electrons are negative and protons are positive so there is an attraction between positive and negative charges and protons are in the nucleus this is where we have protons electrons are around in the orbits so protons are going to pull the electrons with the positive charge in ion there are more protons than electrons so obviously the pull is stronger than an atom so if the pull is stronger is going to pull the orbits towards it much more stronger and that makes ion a smaller so that results having a smaller radius for positive ion like aluminum so I hope you enjoy the video and it helps explaining the Bohr's model for giving us the number of valence electron and formation of 